Nothing you're about to hear should be taken as or used in place of medical advice. If you resemble anything you hear, contact your doctor. If you want to know what Walgreens thinks, ask them, because we don't know. Please wait behind the line for privacy. You're listening to the Pharmacist Answers Podcast. I'm Cynthia, the pharmacist, and today you'll get your questions answered and your curiosity cured. A quick review is that your brain is held inside your skull by a tri-layer membrane called the meninges. And each of the three layers has a name and they have their own little function that they do and how they help support the brain and keep it nice in the middle so it's not banging around inside your head as long as you're doing normal activities. All of the things inside your brain and those membranes inside your skull are fed and get their nutrients through blood vessels. So there's always the potential that those blood vessels are going to rupture and bust open and allow the blood to leak out. So that's where the brain bleeds come from. Because there's several layers in there, there are several different positions that the blood vessels can rupture. Not applicable to your brain, but obviously you have skin that sets on top of your skull and some and some connective tissue underneath that skin, and that layer can bleed. And that's not as dangerous because it's outside the bone and then there's lots more flexibility in that layer of skin for the skin to stretch and allow that blood to be there and then allow it to, to reabsorb into the body for the body to be able to heal itself. So that's called an extracranial bleed because your cranium being your skull bones, extra being on the outside like external. So outside the skull bones, outside the cranium, those types of bleeds don't affect your brain. They may hurt and still may require medical treatment, but they're not going to affect your brain. So the opposite of that is intracranial. So that's inside the skull bones, intra like internal. And there's a couple of different classifications based on which layer it falls in. The outermost area that you can get blood vessels to rupture is called the epidural space. So you've heard of epidurals like pain relief or a anesthetic type thing for women having babies. An epidural means that the medication goes into the space between the bone and that dura layer. So that epidural space is the space between your your skull the inside of your skull bone and that dura mater layer which is that durable outermost layer that anchors your brain to your skull bones. So if that area ends up with blood vessels rupturing and you end up with blood in that area all brain bleeds require medical attention. I'm just going to say that right now. Like, let's not say, oh, I got a brain bleed and I'll just wait it out at home. That's not an option. But in that area, because it's in the outermost layer of those meninges and against the bone, it can increase your intracranial pressure and requires medical treatment. But there's extra cushioning around your brain, so it's not applying direct pressure to your brain cells to lead to damage. Unless it's ginormous and it's a lot of blood, it usually will seal itself off and, um, and the body can reabsorb that blood, but you still have to have treatment and that requires medications administered by medical staff, doctors, and nurses to lower the pressure inside that closed system in your brain. So epidural, epi meaning above or outside, is the top of the dura layer against the inside of the skull bone. Now there's a subdural bleed, sub as in underneath, there's the dura layer and then there's the arachnoid layer and they're usually pretty close together naturally when all your body's doing everything that it's supposed to be doing and everything's happy. So if blood seeps into that space, then it causes them to stretch apart and that can cause extreme pain. But again, as you're getting blood closer to the brain, there's not as much cushion 
and you're going to end up with more risk to the brain cells that are closest to that area. So again, that subdural, it's underneath that dura mater layer, but it causes it to separate from the layer that's connected right below it, which can lead to pain. And again, your brain cells are going to be more at risk because it's closer to them. Then the third type of bleed is the subarachnoid bleed. So subarachnoid is going to be below the arachnoid and as I described how the layers of your meninges are put together, the arachnoid layer looks like spider web. So it kind of has these cellular columns that anchor it to the layer below it. So there's actually some space there, but that space has a certain type of fluid in it that doesn't need blood in it. So if blood ends up in there, then that can be bad. People will describe as a thunderclap headache. If they have a blood vessel rupture into this space, it feels like their whole head at all at one time has been zapped with thunder. They feel like they can hear it inside their head. It's like they heard it pop and they hear it all over their head all at one time and it's excruciating pain. People who have had strokes in this area that actually survive it and reach recovery on the other side will always describe it as that is the worst headache of my entire life. Um, they may have experienced migraines and other types of headaches before. That overall pain all at one time just bam inside their head they describe it as like a clap of thunder when you see the lightning flash and it's so close to you that you hear the crack whip thunder like at the same time or almost instantaneously it's kind of like that it just kind of pals inside their head and they just kind of feel it reverberate all throughout their head at the same time very very painful this type of bleed um, because the layer right below it which is called the pia layer that layer overlays all of the wrinkles and grooves and little indentions of your brain it lays over the top of them fits like a glove so that means if blood ends up on top of that layer then the blood is going to be seeping into those cracks um, where that membrane fits and so because it's closest to the brain without actually being against the brain cells then that requires emergent attention you have that thunderclap somebody calls 911 you get rushed to the hospital they are immediately scanning your brain prepping you for surgery because they may have to go in and do something to relieve the pressure and remove that blood as fast as possible so that is super super dangerous not super common but again it does happen and all brain bleeds no matter what require medical attention so don't think one is less than the other it just has to do with the immediate risk to your brain cells and it affecting your cognition and all of the processes that your body does that's controlled by the brain so that is intracranial so that has to do with between the bone and the brain so that membrane layer there, there are several locations that blood vessels can leak into. Blood vessels can leak whether it has to do with physiological malformations, stroke or aneurysm, injury, head trauma, those kinds of things can lead to blood leaking into those, those different layers. And then there's two types of bleeds that can actually happen inside your brain. And they're called intracerebral. And so cerebral or the cerebellum, meaning the main core of your brain. When you, when somebody says brain and you see a picture of a brain, that's what your cerebrum looks like. If the blood is actually against the brain cells, so not in the layers above it, but actually somewhere inside the brain, that is called an intra parachymal bleed and parachymal is the fancy word that means organ tissue like it doesn't have anything specifically to do with your brain but that's what they call it but it's, it's a bleed that's directly inside the organ not around the outside of the organ or underneath the organ or anything like that and then the second place that's intracerebral that can bleed is actually inside the ventricles of your brain. And I haven't really talked about this. We have talked a little bit about the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the fluid that flows between the arachnoid layer and the pia layer. It kind of flows around it, gives it some cushion. It flows around your spinal cord, so it's cerebrospinal fluid. 
Um, but it's actually created inside these little fluid pockets inside your brain. There's one in each hemisphere, so they mirror each other. They're kind of shaped like fat on one end and skinny on the other. And they make and reabsorb the cerebrospinal fluid to keep that pressure equalized. So if a blood vessel ruptures into those, because that's the deepest part of your brain, it can be very hard to get to and very hard to try to treat. Because that cerebrospinal fluid, you don't want stuff in it. You only want the cerebrospinal spinal fluid in there. You don't want blood in there. You don't want critters in there. You don't want your white blood cells and your immune system cells getting in there. You just want it to be nice and clean and pure cerebrospinal fluid. So if blood vessels rupture into those ventricles, then it can be a problem. So that's brain bleeds and like 15 minutes. The treatment is especially for intracranial bleeds, bleeds that have to do with being in the membranes above your brain. If the blood is creating more pressure on one side, then the main goal is to relieve pressure in another place, whether it's lowering, lowering your blood pressure or lowering your cerebrospinal fluid pressure or something to help it equal out so you don't have that closed system because there's not a lot of space for it to stretch and move and have extra space the way it is on the outside of your skull. So if that pressure starts building up, then that is what starts putting pressure on your brain cells and causing neurological damage, which can affect cognition and your ability to do certain activities, depending on the area of the brain that is, is being pushed on. So brain bleeds crash course. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacist Answers Podcast. The pharmacy is now closed. You can post your questions and comments on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash farm answers pod. Or you can email the show at pharmacist answers here at gmail.com. You can tweet me or message me on Twitter at Sin Hendricks. You can find the show notes at pharmacist answers here wordpress.com Pharmacist Answers broadcasts live on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9.02 a.m. Eastern Time on the Periscope app. You can follow me at Sin Hendricks or view in your web browser at periscope.tv slash Sin Hendricks. See you next time on the Pharmacist Answers podcast. <laughs>